Um, Saint- Welcome home to St. Anne's. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe to receive our sermons. We can't wait to meet you. All right, so let's talk about all this stuff. Um, We've got some really intense readings, and we also have some really intense things going on in our life, and I think um, we need to work through some of those things. Um, And I know the first thing that all of us as clergy are tempted to do, and the first thing that um, all of our parishioners seek from us is comfort, um, to make it all okay. And I struggle with that just as a parent. Our goal is to make it all okay. But I don't think that's our job today. So if if that's what you came here for, get yourself another cup of coffee and go read the newspaper. No, don't read the newspaper. That's terrible. Go read some comics. Or a smutty romance or whatever your go-to escape reading is. Um, Because I'm not here to offer us comfort today. I'm here to say it's okay. Um, It's okay to be in the dark for a little while. And I think um, I will say this is the lintiest lint that I've ever linted. Um, And I hope we never have to lint like this again. And yet I think it's a very sacred time. And our readings today allude to some of that darkness, don't they? They allude to, um, to being present in, in a sense that nothing is okay. Um, and yet we know that in the midst of, of this stuff that doesn't feel okay, God is working. Um, and we get that in our Old Testament reading. Um, the Israelites are tired and exhausted and they feel like Nothing will ever be okay again. And it's out of this um, exhaustion and fatigue and sense of death. Um, Not just death, but um, skeletons, bones. There's nothing left. Not even, they're not asleep. They're dead, decayed, gone. That's how the Israelites feel. Um, We get the same story with Lazarus, don't we? That um, just isn't there. And so not only does Lazarus die, but we make sure he's really, truly dead. Like, four days dead. He hasn't just fallen asleep. He's not in some simple little coma. He's dead, dead. He's dead. Like, he stinks he's dead. Um, And having been around enough dead people, there is no way to romanticize any of this. Um, Lazarus is dead, dead. And so there's no hope. There's no hope. It's just incredible darkness and death and depression. There's just no hope. And um, that's when God works, when there is no hope. And I know it can be really easy right now to want to jump straight to Easter morning. But there's no Easter morning without three days in a tomb. Uh, There's no resurrection without a messy, brutal darkness in between, um, soul-wrenching, painful death. And I want us to be okay with that today because that's what's going on in our world, isn't it? It's a mess. It's scary and it's dark and it's not okay. And sometimes it feels like there's no hope. And that's okay. It is okay for us to be in that place. That is where Lent is its most real. And I want us to be okay with our real. Um, I don't want to be in church in my living room. I don't want to not be with you guys. Um, None of this is what we want. None of us want to be like, no, you can't go to the grocery store. No, you can't go get coffee with your friends. No, you can't be teaching your students in a classroom. No, you can't go to work. None of us want those things. And yet it is in being. Hey, those things is okay. Will grant us life, and it's a gift um, that we give not to our, just ourselves, but to the rest of the world. And I think it's tempting to feel like that's wrong, that um, it should be different, that 
if we were just doing things the right way, it would look different. Um, and I know that God has been blamed for all sorts of different reasons for viruses that go bad or bacteria that get really, really mean or cancer or all sorts of different things. And it's really, really tempting to be like, well, here's the reason that God smote us with his mighty smiting powers at this time. God doesn't smite us. Um, and that is the power of the story of Lazarus. Jesus cries. Jesus is sad. And sometimes in times like this, it can be really easy to distance ourselves from God. Um, to make sure that God is some big, scary, out there creature who does things to us or is completely absent from us. That is our other temptation of if God really were there, God would do something. But what if God is doing something? What if, what if God is crying? What if God looks at God's people and cries? Because that's what we believe. We believe that God loved us so much that God came to be with us in the form of a human. With all the dirty, nasty, human-y humanness that comes with that, including the messiness of emotions and feelings. Jesus had those. And Lazarus was his friend. And Martha and Mary are his friends. He cares about them. He loves them deeply. And they are hurting. And he is okay with the fact that he too is hurting. And it's not Lazarus's death that breaks his heart, is it? It's not loss or death that breaks him. It's seeing the pain that people who love Lazarus are going through. That's what breaks him. And what if it's not viruses that are scary? What if it's not bacteria? What if it's not disease and famine and war and all those things that are really, truly the scary things for God? What if it's our pain, what we feel and what we experience? That is what God feels and experiences. And I want us to be okay feeling and experiencing them right now. And I want us to know that God feels them and experiences them with us because God sees us and our fear and our terror and our pain and our suffering and God feels that. So whatever you're feeling, it's okay to feel it. Emotions are neutral, we feel what we feel and that's okay and guess what, sometimes it's healthy. It is okay to feel the feelings that we're feeling. It is okay to not be okay. We're not okay right now and that's all right. But the one thing that I want to make sure that we don't think is that we're alone in it. We are not alone. Whatever you feel, anger, fear, sadness, guilt, joy, wonder, because it is in these darkest moments that light sneaks in. And guess what? Light won't just sneak in on Easter morning. It's going to burst in. It's going to shatter everything and come in anyway. But it won't do that if we don't know what darkness is first. So it's okay. Right now we sit in it. We're okay with it. We are still in it. But we know we are never, ever, 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 ever alone in it. And when we weep, God cries too. We want you to know that you're welcome to join us at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Please be sure to hit subscribe. Stand to together and say the words of the nice We can't cream. wait to meet you. I'm going to get spoiled with this sitting to preach thing and having coffee. And I 